be 19 now and the youngest being 11. Um, and so uh, it was one of the coach men in the local area, a profession on um, and um, tonight uh, what I want to really chat about is how coach parents watch um, it, 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 the background to this um, partly comes up to some of the stuff I did um, certainly similar manner to many I'm a dad coach I started off coaching because my children played and just got pulled more and more into um, the game of football um, and enjoyed it so much so went through the typical um, FA qualifications uh, level one level two level three UEFA uh, B um, youth awards and many many moons ago I also qualified referee um, but that was in my early 20s, but I was still playing and didn't do enough refereeing really to continue on. Um, Joe, do you want to say a few words about your background? Yeah, hi, hi good evening, everyone. Um, very similar to Matt, really. Uh, we've been on many courses together as we've gone through our uh, UA for B, Level 3, Youth Award, etc. Uh, very much similar. I got into football because my kids and I wasn't quick enough to... Uh, not volunteer to be a coach when I uh, when he was seven um, and it really just I got the bug and just joined in and uh, went as far as I can with it um, I've worked more recently in the uh, female game um, and uh, all my coaching now is in the uh, ACC um, at the moment um, but my uh, three children um, all played from seven to 17 uh, and uh, youngest is at Bristol at the moment, but most of them played through the Wiltshire Leagues. Um, but uh, yeah, tonight is uh, hopefully we want you to uh, ask as many questions as possible um, because we want you to be involved as much as you can as well. Um, but Matt's going to take most of it this evening because I've been uh, extremely busy over the last few weeks with other things. Uh, but I'm, I'm here to help with the questions and everything. But most of the work done tonight, I must say, is, is down to Matt. So I'll pass them over and let's get started. Um, thanks, Joe. So um, I got asked many moons ago by some of the coach, one of, one of the teams that I support to do some work around parental behaviour. Um, and I looked at everything that um, the FA produced um, and it was absolutely clear that if we were dealing with rational people, that um, all you would have to do, have to do would read you know the respect code and you wouldn't misbehave but and i'm certain if i was um seeing your faces now um, you'd all be laughing uh, because you would have seen some tremendous behavior um in the parents and coaches that you've refereed and so i brought it back a little bit to some of the work that i did as a teacher where we did some transactional analysis which was based around looking at how I'm behaving and how the person I'm speaking is behaving and how we communicate together. So if you've seen that, it talks about, you know, somebody communicating as a child and listening as a parent or somebody ch talking as a parent and listening as a child. And I tried to um, apply that to football. Um, plus, there's a, there's a lot of research around psychology in sport. And some of you might have read uh, a book called The Chimp Paradox by Dr. Steve Peters. And that also then looked at this concept that um, uh, in reality, when we get put under stress, um, if we don't realize it, we can quite easily go into fight, um, flight or freeze. And so tonight, um, it's a bit of fun, but I want you to really to introduce you to kind of six emotional states that you might observe while you're refereeing. And, you know, then, Kind of support your ability to recognize these states and discuss how you might want to manage them a little bit with with um with parents or or coaches rather than players so th that's the kind of plan for about 20 minutes um hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll find it a little bit entertaining and just chuck some questions um into the into the chat and we'll try and pick up the questions as we go along that's tremendous um so if I look at this, this is it. How do parents and coaches approach uh, mini and youth football? And I went on the internet and all I did was pick out a couple of pictures because these pictures mean something. So a bit of a pop quiz, 
um, uh, as you look at it, who's the top left? And why is this picture so iconic about losing emotional um, or becoming over emotional? So if anybody's first in there into the chat room with giving me who it is and what was happening at this point in that man's coaching career. Yeah, that's that's really. Oh, hello, Rob. Hope you're well. Yeah, Keegan lost it. If you if you can remember, it would it was Keegan on on. I think it was match of the day in at, at the time, and he was being interviewed, and uh, Alex had kind of wound him up a little bit, and it was I would love it, I would love it if we beat them, and he got absolutely lost it, hadn't he? And then on the right, you've got wonderful. Uh, probably soon to be Sir Gary Lineker, um, because we've had an explosion of football in this country, primarily down to the Premier League. So tonight, I think we've got, um, I don't know if there's any Premier League on TV, but yesterday, if you had BT, you'd have been watching the Champions League. Tonight's the Champions League. Tomorrow's the UEFA um, uh you know, the, the secondary one, isn't it? And then there's times where if you wanted, you could watch football for two or three hours a night, every single night and listen to what the pundits say. And, and clearly on our right hand side, we've just got a bunch of kids who are playing football at various levels. Um, and then uh, I don't know who the supporter is uh, on our right hand side, but he does look like a Swindon Town fan. At the moment, um, I think I think I think we're we're fourth from bottom, um, and certainly on Twitter, you you can you can listen to them rant against the chairman um, and the uh, and the manager on a regular basis. I suppose that you know the bright spot is at least at least Scott 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 Twine's come through the academy, and then clearly some of the other pictures I've just put them in because you know as parents you invest a huge amount of time on your children. So that's what we're going to talk about is I'm going to try and introduce you to some of the people you might see um, or hear on a football pitch. Um, and so the first one, um, I, I, the person you might say, is that if I go and watch adult football and if I go to Swindon, I pay my 20 quid or 15 quid or 25 quid and I go there almost in a tribal manner and I'm watching adult football as a fan. So as a fan of football um, uh, and, and again um, not wanting to be kind of uh, over, overly you know at, at Swindon I think it's called the town end isn't it? If, if I didn't go, let's see if you've got any town end fans possibly on the chat. Um, if you go in there, and I've only been there a couple of times, I normally sit in the stand if I go with, with one of my kids. Um, you'll hear you'll you'll hear certain things being shouted at the referee or at opposition players or at your own players because you've paid for the money and you can now say pretty much what you want. You're exceptionally vocal as expression in you, your thoughts and everybody around you. That experience makes or breaks your weekend. If you're emotionally involved as an adult fan, um, you know, it, you're distraught when your team loses. And realistically, whether you're going to have a good weekend or not is, is largely down to um, whether you are going to win or not. And if you're not going to win, you're, um, uh, you're, you're going to get upset. So what does this mean in, in kids football? Well, if you've got if you've got one of your parents adding like an adult fan, um, you know, he'll be effing and jeffing as you as a referee. Um, he will. Um, you know, a great one, which I always love, is that um, he'll be criticising the other parent who is running the line. And I, I find that absolutely hilarious. He, he might say things like, well, he's clearly biased because he's an opposition parent. And I look at him and I'd say, well, of course he's biased. He's an opposition parent. So we get to see is this, this person you might see is, is, is not watching it as, as, a, um, as a parent. He's, he's turned up to football. And so he's going to be vocal. He's watching it as an adult fan, but he's not realising it. 
he doesn't realize he's being this kind of person so um uh you know it, it, your team misses a goal it is terrible opposition put a tackle in send him off you know shouting off 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 a, a youth referee while an under 12 makes a challenge so um that's that's number one Uh, before I move on, is, is, is if chuck out any questions or any thoughts you've got in the um, chat box. You you could watch this as an adult um, adult coach, and and you probably find that this is how um, quite a few people who have, who have been involved in football watch watch it. So think of now how much football's exploded on TV, like I like I chatted about. Every one of us now is an absolute expert as a footballer. You know, we know when we should play 4-4-3 or a 4-4-2 diamond. We know that you shouldn't be playing that person up top because he's not going to score your goals. You know, there's heated conversations before the game about, you know, it, you know how best did this team play? You know, we shouldn't be playing, you know, Jim as a, uh, as a right back because he's too small. And this person will, will be shouting from the sideline for what the kids are going to be doing. So you'll get dribble, pass. Now, if you've got four or five of these together, um, you're going to get one person shouting dribble, one child shouting pass, somebody else shouting uh, kick it out. And so you can start to see that this person isn't watching football from a child-centred manner or even a child-centred coach. He's watching football because... He's watching it as a coach, as a pundit. Um, he's watching it effectively as Gary Neville, um, uh, but not as knowledgeable. And so you can start to see how if you combine an adult fan and an adult coach, you're starting to get to an environment where they don't realise they are watching child football because they've not realised that yet that this isn't over 18s football. So we've got these two people um, that don't know that, that they're what they're doing. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a gap now. Do we think these are likely to be these two men or women? And just put your thoughts. So there's some really good comments there about the balance between between mums or dads, men or women. Um, I probably agree it can be both. Um, I genuinely, I, when I've sat and, as part of my unexperiment experiment, that I, I stand at uh, games and see if I can spot these people, um, a lot of them are men, um, it is, is my view on it. Um, and a lot of them are, uh, that you know, they're people who won't volunteer to be the coach, but are quite happy to criticise the coach. Um, but it definitely can be mum, mums as well. Um, and then, um, so we've got this adult fan watching football as, an, as, a, as a fan, criticising the referee, being exceptionally vocal about your decisions, everybody else's decisions. Winning is really important. Opposition challenge is definitely a foul. Their challenge, why didn't you let it play on? You know, criticising uh, linos. Great when when an adult fan lino and an adult fan parent watching have an argument then with each other. Then we've got this individual who's starting to watch it as an adult coach. You know, it's all about how the team plays, where people should be playing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why are you playing him in midfield? He's not good enough to play in midfield. We should only be playing the best players. This kind of person probably wouldn't believe in substitutions for kids. Uh, might mean they don't win. And then the final person, if you like to say, in, in the red zone, um, 
is that insecure parent that you might not see as much as the referee, but the coaches will. Um, and that person really wants um, their child to be the star of the team. It's not because they're a bad parent. It's just they want their child to have a good experience, have a really positive experience um, and are, are very worried that they're not. You know, they want their child to be the centre of attention. They want their child to play in the position that makes them happy, maybe not the one that makes them develop the most. They're very, very nervous before games. This kind of parent, from my view, will um, pay a child if it's um, uh, um, because they don't only bet for scoring. So, you know, you might have seen it, you know, my son's on a fiver if he gets a hat trick, um, which is bonkers because it's a very transactional way to approach football. Um, and so you've got this parents now insecure, uh, really upset. Um, uh, again, you both men and women, but it, I, I'd probably say um, um, mums can start to veer on this little bit from a point of view of wanting their child to have a really good experience. Um, but dads can very much um, uh, start to uh, look on this from the point of they want their son to be the star of the team. Um, you know, why isn't my son playing as a number 10? Because that's where we are an attacking midfielder, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and some, I'll just kind of stop that there um, and just look at some. Andy's made a really good, and hello, Andy, by the way, I did see you join. Um, I think Andy's made a really good comment in the in the comments box is that it's difficult not to watch the game as an adult fan because that's all they've ever known. Um, and, and arguably, that was one of our roles as coach mentors was to go into clubs and help clubs and run these sessions. So certainly for one, um, I, I, in fact, I've run I've run this session for parents where I print off these and we talk about their behaviours uh, for the, for Wharton Bassett for devices, um, for um, advanced soccer coaching in Swindon um, and for Bishop's Cannings. So, um, uh, yeah, it's a good point there about uh, things start to change after under 15s. And I think you're probably right there. Um, uh, <laughs> I've sent off more coaches than players last season. So if that's the bad. Right. Let's just have a look. At, at the good that you'll see, because there is lots and lots of good out there. So um, these are the kind of three opposites to to the, the behaviours I've just talked about. I've talked about the football fan. Um, you know, he celebrates good play on both teams. He supports the referee and realises the referee's learning as much as the players. Um, uh, you you realise comments emotionally emotional when you're a footballer. And what he wants is development and enjoyment um, are really important to the game. So you will meet a lot of parents who get that too. Um, whether they know they've got that or whether that's them naturally is probably a different discussion. Um, and then you kind of kick on to this guy who's, who hopefully understands um, uh, and is now behaving as a youth coach. You know, they're, they're predominantly quiet during games because they know that players can't listen uh, and do everything and somebody shouting at them. Um, they support, you know, guidance and direction given by the child's coaches. Um, they provide positive comments and there's, there's loads and loads of research about what the balance between positive comments and uh, not negative comments, but comments that are transactional in their development of, of behavior. So typically you've got to have four positive, four or five or five positive comments to a negative one if you want that individual to listen to you. They understand the limits of their knowledge. And this is, a, I think, a really important point. Um, uh, I've done my UA for B. Um, I've got that much level of knowledge plus what I've learned from play, et cetera, et cetera. What I haven't got is, is you know, a pro license. Um, and a lot of that comes down to I understand in many respects is as you know more and more, you realize how little you know. Um, and that's, you know, really important. And then you've got a secure parent who realizes that, in fact, 
some of the best things about football is the mental resilience you're going to learn while you're playing it. Um, and probably a point that I'd pick up out of all of these things, um, uh, I've definitely been all six at some time while I've been watching football. Um, so, for example, I, I had I've got one of my children who um, is uh, um, a late developer, June birth year, um, and, and ended up playing at academy level, but played a year down. Now, for some parents, if, if that was playing your son down, that's indicating that he's not very good because you want your son to play a year up. But because I'd had some learning about biobanding, I probably understood, or in fact, I did understand that development or the, the environment to develop while he was growing and getting bigger. Um, you know, as a secure parent, you want all the players to have success. You want resilience to be learned by. You're calm before and after games. And in fact, you're not too bothered about the actual result. Um, uh, you're going to go for your McDonald's afterwards. You're not going to have any inquest in why you didn't pass or what you didn't do. Um, and and you are realise things about learning that playing in multiple positions is good. So if I put them together, you kind of see that what I mean by transactional analysis and the transaction between um, the, 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 the kind of groups that we've got or the individuals that we've got um, who are watching football. We've got this adult fan. To him, it's, it's not um, Blunsdon uh, versus Lydiard. Um, it is the semi-final of the most important cup um, that you will find. Um, which clearly is the North Wilts uh, under 13s. Um, and, and, you know, he's going to be watching it as such. He's got emotionally involved with the result. You know, the fact the referee's a 15 year old or a 16 year old doesn't matter to him because if the referee makes a mistake, he's, he's obviously incompetent. Exceptionally vocal in, 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 his, in his views, um, especially if the ref's making a bad, uh, a bad decision from his point of view or there are tackles going in. Um, you might even see him, you know, lots shouting of oohs and ahs. You've then got somebody who's going to watch the game as an adult coach. So, you know, he's looking at whether we're playing 4-4-2. And he's telling every single on the player on the pitch to pass, shoot, dribble, get it away. You know, winning is really, really important to both of those. Got this idea of an insecure parent who um, uh, is just tipped over in some respects of wanting their child to be the star of the show. Um, they're really nervous and they're doing behaviours that will actual fact likely have a more of a negative impact and a positive impact on their child's love of the sport. Now, conversely, then, you've got the other side of the coin, which is a football fan, somebody who's celebrating good play, realises this is kids football and realises that you're not going to get to where you want to go to your 18, 19 or 20. Um, it, you know, totally that emotional comments. Um, are emotional, they're, they're not rational. Um, you've got a youth coach who's, who, who um, if, if I was looking at this, um, buys into what we used to call the youth mods. You know, it's quiet during games, it's a positive environment. Um, and then you've got a, um, a secure parent who realises it's about the resilience and what my child learns during the game, not just them having a good time. Um, and you'll see these behaviours very much in both coaches and fans. Um, so a lot of our, our coaches are like myself, a, a dad parent, you know, and I've, I've been at times exceptionally insecure when I've been coaching my own child about wanting them to have um, success, but equally not wanting them to be looked at as being the favorite. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, and I, I've 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 been that adult coach poorly where, you know, I've, I've shouted too much from the sideline. Um, and I've also watched the game as a um, um, adult fan. Um, All right. Number three son just coming into his bedroom to get his, his, his uh, a glass. Um, uh, um, and I've been I've, I've been that adult coach and and for me certainly i've been all six of these people and i try to keep into the green so i realize now before i go to a game um 
uh, especially as a spectator, that I'm just there to be a parent, watch and enjoy myself. Um, and then after the game, go and take him. Uh, he, he, that's Ben. So uh, Ben plays for Bishops Cannings under 16s um, and a uh, nice bunch of kids, pretty decent. Um, and I know that they, they play at um, uh, uh, Carn at Beversbrook. So I know that after the game, we're going to go to uh, Tesco and get some food. Um, and that's it. And, and I have to remind myself not to be not to be um, somebody in the red. So this is really difficult because um, you, in a 60 minute, 90 minute gain of football, um, it's more about being aware of why and how people are behaving in an inappropriate manner, because most people involved with football are just good people up in their emotions clearly you're going to get some people who you will you know are going to overstep the mark so you know telling someone to calm down is never going to work um, i know joe's going to mention some of the some of the some of the comments about how to deal with coaches but one of it is always about facts you know uh, rather than opinions um, uh, um, and then um uh don't be emotional in return right here's a good one does anybody understand what my Ram rambo quote is from rambo first blood um great film it's fantastic so if i've got anybody who can spot that I'll, I'll explain it anyway um i'm a, I'm a big fan of rambo uh, first blood great great film Right, okay, so, so those of you who are a certain age like myself will remember Sly, Sly, uh, uh, Sly Stallone in Rambo First Blood. And in Rambo First Blood, um, uh, Rambo is an ex-Vietnam um, vet. And uh, the recommendation, yeah, that's it, Darren, just walk away, don't go hunting for trouble. It, it was effectively the, the comment from the colonel in charge of Rambo was to just let him walk away because he'll calm down and you can arrest him uh, in a town, you know, 20 miles away. And so that's it. And so I, I would not get involved emotionally. There is a trigger where um, uh, you might get emotionally involved in this, um, what they call um, chimp paradox might kick in with you in a different way. So it's a walk away, don't get involved, report, let the FA deal with, deal with issues. But it's mainly that. As soon as you start spotting people and how they're behaving, and you'll see it a lot with coaches as they start to wave from being a child-centered coach into a adult coach, and they don't realize that they're doing exactly the same criticisms as Klopp would do, um, and they should get exactly the same um, uh, short shrift. So I said I'd do about 20 minutes, and I think we had, we had um, about... Uh, um, five minutes at the start just to get us all kicked off. Um, but that's it. It's really introduction to how parents and coaches um, approach and watch mini football. I'd love to answer any of your questions. Um, if you want to do some reading, The Chimp Paradox um, by Steve Peters, um, it's about five or six quid on Amazon. It's a really interesting book to look at how people's emotions rather than rationality start to drive things. Matt, I've got a question or a point for you. Um, I think what you've done there is really good. But I think as a referee, you also need your own coping mechanisms. Um, and humour uh, can be one. So quite often, the guy that's the adult fan or the adult coach is in the minority. And it's quite easy to get the parents, on the other parents on your side, by using humour correctly. And I, don't, and I don't always get it right, I must say. Um, but you're out there on your own as a referee and, and you do need to have some sort of coping mechanism to get you through that. Have you got any comments on that? Yeah, I, I think you're spot on. I think the, um, uh, things that makes it fantastic is the emotions, isn't it? Um, I certainly go now to games from a point of view of sometimes I spot these people. 
and I don't get upset by them. Um, there was a particular, um, you know, game I watched, um, and and you've just got to you've got to smile because the people don't know they're making such a fool of themselves. Um, um, and so I, I I wouldn't disagree with that. Certainly in football, we go through. Um, I'm I'm guessing the referees. If you've seen the four corner approach to analysing player player development, and a big you know, the psychological corner of being a player. Well, you know, I certainly look at um, referees, and when I watch them on the uh, in the Premier League, is the amount of psychological psychological support, you know, coping mechanisms that they must have must be phenomenal. You know, we talk about having a thick skin, um, but it's it's far far more than that. It's having the resilience to bounce back. Um, as a as a referee, I, I think at, at certainly at the top level, and I've got no doubt it's similar um, within Wiltshire. Um, is 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 ever so important? Yeah, because I, I had a situation just after the first lockdown where we went back playing football, and it was un, under 16s. It was a fairly good match, and there was one guy giving me dogs abuse in, in the middle. So breaking play, I just stopped and said across the pitch, you know. Four months. That's the best you can come. You've had four months of practice. It's inside. It's the best you can do. And everyone just laughed at him. He shut up. And I never heard from him ever again. So, de developing some sort of humour reaction to stupid comments can work in your favour. I think that there's a danger with that, though, isn't there? You say the wrong thing to the wrong guy. In the next minute, you're peeling him off of you because. Oh, Steve, I've, I've, had, I've, had the, I've had those as well. And I, I must admit, you've got, to, you've got to choose your victims. I would also, if I, if I look at this now, and I'm, um, you know, I've said I'm in the military, and we're a very robust organisation, but there's <laughs> certain things I can't do. And I would, I would look at, uh, and personally, me, you know, I said I qualify as a coach, uh, sorry, as a, as, a, as a ref many years ago. Um, and I can't talk about what your what your um, development is, but um, that's technically if you're being paid a workplace, isn't it? You're not doing it for voluntary, at twenty pounds or whatever it is. It's a workplace, and there is a certain level of behaviour that we can all expect from other people that they shouldn't cross over, and if they do, they ought to have some kind of sanction to them. Um, certainly, I, I, and I I don't know what Joe thinks. Um, I I think um, a, a, a lot of a lot of the refs are so understanding the emotional level that some of the players go through, um, and probably one of the reasons why I don't referee is that I, I think that everybody could get booked if I was in charge, um, just because the, the certainly the understanding that that I I wouldn't have as much as you guys um, and girls um, and what you effectively put up with. But it's your workplace, and I think that at the behaviour of the players and the coaches and the parents should be appropriate to that, even though you are volunteers. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think the one thing we have to be careful of is the one thing we should be all thinking about is obviously we're all there to have fun, whether you're a supporter, referee, you're there for enjoyment, um, and so you know, maybe it's not, you know. The, the laughter's a good idea in the right situation, um, but it could work in the wrong situation and flare everything up. So as you say, you've got to pick your times um, to do that. Um, I think from, I just wanted to add to what um, Matt said tonight about from my experience as a coach, as a youth coach, um, looking at, at referees. So that's from under sevens up to, under 16s that um, a lot of the coaches, uh, a lot of the referees through the years um, are young um, and therefore they probably wouldn't have the confidence to to use humour um, in, in those environments. In fact, in my experience is they, they tend to uh, be, be very shy and um, that leads to them showing um, almost a weakness and the kids on the football pitch are very quick to pick up on that. And if they think you're not in control of the game, they'll make sure they push the boundaries. Um, and it can be a very unexpected, uh, not a very good experience to be involved in. Um, and therefore, you then get the coaches and the parents joining in. 
Um, I think from a coach, the first thing I always wanted from a referee was for them to turn up on time, have a, you know, come across, introduce themselves um, and just talk to us about the game. Even if it's just like, oh, this is what we're going to do with substitutions. What do you want to do with throw-ins? Do, do you, if it's under eight, do you want to give them a chance or should I be you know, applying the law? Thing? So having that conversation with a coach, because we're all trying to develop at the same time, and a lot of the, the young the younger age groups, they're young coaches, so they're, they're young referees, sorry, and they need to to also learn through that experience as well. Um, the, the one thing that I really, really liked, and I, you know, it's, I can see on here that there's some referees that have, have uh, I've been a coach during well of refereed, so there's Ella on here. I've even got a player, I see Jasmine's on here, who's obviously now moved into uh, refereeing. Um, is to think about not reacting to statements. There's a lot of times coaches will shout stuff at referees. It's a foul. It, you know, just ignore them. Yeah, it's just a statement. Uh, if the, if you get asked a question, then if it's asked in the right way, then it's sometime. You know, I'll explain it at half time or afterwards. Then you you get in the respect of the coach. Because we all know that everyone makes mistakes, yeah? Even VAR. Yeah, everyone was crying out for VAR because referees made mistakes all the time. Yeah, I think most people would want to get rid of VAR and just, you know, have the human human element back again. Um, the bit about statements, a little bit of adding on. Rather than, a, for me, if a referee can comment during the game, explain especially to the younger players, the you know, final touch was off such and such throw in to, to Derry Hill or whatever. Um, it, it immediately stops the coach who said that was our ball or, you know, because it's gone. The moment's gone. It's made the decision. The decision was firm. It's been made. There's no ambiguity about it. And whether it was the right decision or the wrong decision, it just gives an overall confidence to everybody that a decision's been made. And I think that that's, especially from spectators watching on, if they see people dithering about making decisions, they it starts to get the the red side, the adult fan, adult coach, et cetera, coming through a bit more, or even the insecure parent, because they start to worry that their their kid might be, you know, getting kicked or 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 um or liable to get hurt in a game. So that's just a few little things for me there in regards to what I liked uh, referees to do, what it gave me a bit of confidence um, in them. Yeah, I've been all six. I'm sure Ella's seen all six of those through the many times she's uh, done my teams. Um, it happens. But I think hopefully the majority of us are going from green to red, but back to green very quickly. And it, the emotional bit is short and sharp. So if somebody's normally very calm and then they suddenly lose it for, for 10 seconds, sometimes maybe realise that that might be for something, a more adequate reason rather than just kicking off all the time. So think about how you relate to the coaches through half times, feedback afterwards. Chats like that, because you tend to get the same teams two or three times a year. And if you can you can get that initial contact, I think it really helps. Don't know what other people think about that. I don't know if you also check. Um, um, I mean, you're probably all aware because it, it's a, our local league of which teams you're refereeing. And it'd be really interesting to see things such as whether... Um, parental and player and coach behavior improves as the leagues go either up or down um but certainly you'll get some you'll get perfectly good people acting in the red because they don't know they're doing it at certain games um and uh i know somebody said it's you know is it not up to the parents to control themselves um th there's always a of when one parent is a bit like if you currently step in and tell somebody to wear a mask um 
you know, it's probably morally the right thing to do, but the out outcome might be very, very different to what you expect because you don't know that parent. And, and certainly I've seen, um, you know, lots of parents acting as adult fans, almost in groups. I wouldn't say coming to blows, but certainly having quite, you know, quite obvious disagreements on different teams. But I would put it down to the coach. You know, as a coach myself, um, I, I, I have had conversations with parents, A, about acting as adult coaches, acting as insecure parents, and acting as an adult fan and shouting at the referee. Um, even down to when my own, my own dad, who is 80 today, comes and watches my kids, I have to remind him not to shout um, uh, <laughs> too much. Good point from Martin that he's put in about young referees joining the Referees Association. Don't know, Martin, if you want to say something about that. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the stuff that you said, Joe, about approaching the coaches and the teams when you arrive at the pitch and doing your pitch inspection, all, all of that. Um, it's a sort of thing that you learn on the referees course, but if you're not careful, you very quickly forget that you're supposed to do these things and you turn up with 10 minutes to go, you rock up not wearing your kit properly and you expect respect immediately when actually if you turned up half an hour beforehand, did your pitch inspection, spoke to the coaches, spoke to the players, you, as a referee you're all automatically setting down some markers as to what you expect from everybody. Um, and going to the local referees association is the best way that young referees can learn from the older referees. Um, it's unfortunately falling out of fashion, especially with COVID, but when COVID's out of the way and when the RA starts getting up again, I'd strongly suggest that any young referee looks to join their local uh, association. There's plenty of the branches that are up and running at the moment doing stuff virtually. The RA okay. nationally are doing a whole bunch of stuff, pretty much like the, the bits that we're doing here. So if, if there are young people out there that I'm on this call who haven't joined the RA, now's as good a time as any, and you'll get access to all of the experience that referees have, as Martin was saying. So I think now's the time to do it. If, you, if you've got the opportunity, do it, do it now. So I've got a question for Matt and Joe, and this is one of, my, as a referee, this is one of my biggest frustrations. You mentioned about substitutes. Why can't coaches get their subs ready, pitted on the halfway line, rather than calling the referee to make a sub and then asking the kid to get his coat off, his tracksuit bottoms on, put his shin pads on and get him to run on halfway down the pitch? That will depend on whether you're 2-0 up or 2-0 down, doesn't it? <laughs> I think that as a referee, there, there was one thing I could ask coaches to do was to prepare their subs properly and on time and get them ready. Because, you know, we stop the match for, for a, a substitute and sometimes it's a minute before the kid gets on the pitch and you've got plenty of time to be organised. So mm -hmm. as a coach, the one thing I would ask you to do is to look at how you would, how you better control your substitutes. If I could just come in, um, it's a really interesting point and you're absolutely right. Um, but this is a child coach, Germany's in a level one course that lasts less than four days, that in that time you've got to do, say, um, they wouldn't know that they've got to do that unless somebody do it. Um, because it's common sense, apart from common sense, isn't that common? Um, so there's lots and lots of things in our game where I completely agree with you. Um, We've only got this, um, you know, got such a short time on the level one courses and the new level one courses, I believe, are going to go online. So and, and that would be a very interesting thing for you guys to comment on to see whether a behaviour improves or, or gets worse. Um, because we, uh, those of you who have done learning know that it's not very good at engaging with generally rather than what a course does. And, and we've been very lucky in Wiltshire to the likes of Mike Byrne as our lead, our lead kind of coach developer. Because the one thing that Mike does is really engage with his learners. Um, so you're absolutely spot on. But, um, you know, a level one coach 
doesn't fully understand how to develop a coaching program or develop a coaching um, plan, um, I don't think he's going to really fully understand how to manage fully manage a game of football. And it's just something we have to recognise and help. And it might be that thing of having a chat with him before the game. Say, look, you know, um, make sure they probably would never have thought about it. I suppose it depends on the age as well. I mean, there's been occasions when, yeah, I've made substitutions and it's sometimes like herding sheep because they've all disappeared to kick a ball 20 yards away, even though you told them they were going on the next time the ball went out. Um, so, yeah, I think while it's, while it's part of the game, it's the same sort of thing as you said when you go on the course to learn to be a referee, that you often forget about turning up 25 minutes beforehand or whatever that that signed of slips, that little things like, now I never thought that it would upset a ref about having have, not having a sub ready. I, I, it did, yeah, you've just asked, you just made the comment, but I never actually thought to myself, that's really going to annoy him. You might might say, come on, hurry up. Yeah, it, but not, it, it, not, it's not so much annoying. It's not so much annoying him, Joe, but he expects you to put the five minutes it takes. Yeah, off. yeah. On his no, watch. You're, you're uh, absolutely second, right. Have, have you stopped the watch, ref? Well, no, because you're not ready. So yeah. you know, if, if you lose three minutes of that game and you could have scored in that three minutes, you're not going to be very happy with the referee. But actually, it was because the coach wasn't prepared. And and I, I know that it's, it's a learning game. And I do ask coaches before every match, and they still ignore me. So it's, it's just something that really annoys me. It's something I'll take away from today. I've never even thought about it. I could just add there's some good comments, and one of them was about the laws of the game. And this comes to how you know the transactional analysis is going to work. You know, if you're um, uh, a football fan, is in from a point of view of a child centered football fan, a child centered football coach, you will absolutely leave the referee to decide the laws of the game because you understand that you don't know them. If you're a football fan in the red box I talked about, I can guarantee you, if I go back to this guy at the start. He will have an opinion or she will have an opinion um, on the laws of the game because they, they don't understand that they don't understand them. And that's against and, and you're, you're not necessarily going to change that. Um, it's just that these are the people that you might come in contact with. And having a <laughs> deal with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're on the phone, George. <laughs> Always works. Lost in map. Can I can I just explain if he's disappeared? Um, Tracy put a good point on regarding their experience since they've gone back down after lockdown that in grassroots football the respect to referees has gone um, completely downhill gone backwards um, interesting, is, is that opinion for most people is that across the board or is it just in you know, is it just an isolated thing personally I would think that from what Matt's explained, that going after lockdown, everyone's watched so much football as an adult fan. They've suddenly been let loose and they're continuing to watch their son as if he's a professional footballer and everything around it. Yeah, it's not helped by the fact that nobody knows what's a foul or what's a red card anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, watched, um, I watched a game where a player was challenging for the ball and he slid in across in front of the other player um clear, uh, clear yellow card no problem with that the player was being challenged stood where he was and then when the player got directly opposite directly in front of him dropped with both knees deliberately into the middle of the guy's back um the referee on the assistant say so was then sent the player off um it was appealed and rescinded by the fa so I, I don't know 
what is or isn't a red card. And if I don't know as a referee, I'm not sure what chance anybody else has got. I, I think that goes to a whole host of things that the FA could do so much to make this clearer. FIFA could do much, so much to make this clearer. Because if you're talking about consistency of decisions, all of that sort of stuff, unless somebody is actually telling everybody that this is what it looks like and we're all applying the laws in the same way, I don't think anybody's got a chance. Um, just sort of, I think the other side of that is that the, the, uh, they keep tweaking it and changing it, but um, you guys as referees are then educated on what the changes are, um, and quite often they're quite difficult to interpret what they are. And if it's difficult for you guys, what chance of these guys in the red, or even some of them in the green, um, have of understanding it? So it, it I think for, for me as a grassroots coach, looking at the youth side um all i'm asking for from a from a referee is is th me getting the impression that they're 100 percent correct in their decision whether it's right or wrong they've seen it they've made their mind up they've made the decision Can I I think you don't but you don't know whether that is or isn't the case if we don't know and a, a think, bit about can, how do you get people to tell. understand if, if each of the leagues has got an evening where people are going along so that somebody from the referee community is telling them, explaining to them what the changes are, they've at least got a chance. But I'm not sure that happens. Steve, I think that does happen, especially in Wiltshire, um, whenever there's a major change to the rules. Uh, the RDO, uh, the Referee Development Officer, has always organised evenings for clubs, and I know that North Wilts have organised evenings for clubs as well. Uh, the disappointing thing is they're actually quite badly attended, so I think the opportunity is there. I just don't think that the coaches. That's exactly the point I was making, Martin. Yeah, yeah. The... but like, like a lot of things, you can't make it compulsory, can you? Absolutely, you can't. You can't. Uh, you can't force the horse to drink. Yep. Yeah. You're also relying on that, even the ones that attend, you're then relying on them getting it all out to the to their coaches for them to see it and then for them coaches to then feed it out to the parents so they understand what's what the new changes are. Can I just come back again, just Joe, there's you know the yeah. question about whether um behaviors improved or uh been a little bit worse due to lockdown. And, and again, if we go back and look at psychology, you know, you have probably got a group of children who are exceptionally excited about going and playing football again. So, you know, so when, you know, when you get kids who are excited about doing something, there's a chances that their emotions can then push over to the next, you know, inappropriate level. You've also then got a bunch of um, coaches and, and, you know, I'm, I've been that individual where, um, this this thing of youth football partly takes over your life because you get so involved with it and they're excited and nervous and then you've got a bunch of parents who were excited and nervous so you have got a kind of cocktail that says you know um uh you're gonna have to be very clear um direct and in control in order to manage that top cocktail um and probably you know certainly listen to the more um uh, mature and experienced that's probably exactly what you can do but it if we're recognizing that it might be just the idea of how do we support our younger co uh, younger referees to recognize that they're going into that and they might be a little bit more nervous because they haven't refereed in 12 weeks so we've got this cocktail we just need to recognize and then be calm in our approach to manage it <laughs> I think one one big thing um, that I've noticed since I've been refereeing is that you know the coaches need to understand that it's amateur football and we're not going to be as good as you know Mike Dean on TV 
and we're not going to get every single decision correct. And I know that some coaches understand that, but they're expecting Premier League performances from people that just, you know, do it for a bit of fun on the weekend. Um, and, you know, if you're doing the Wiltshire Senior League, it's the Wiltshire Senior League. It's, it's not, you know, the National League. It's not League Two. So you need to understand that the referees are of that level as well. And if you think you're better than that league, then go and play in a higher division because you're going to get better officials. Absolutely. And I think that all of us who are rational and are looking at this, you know, and we'd be in the green, would absolutely understand. But it, it's the nature of, of, and again, not everybody, there will be people that, that dip into that red. I mean, you know, exactly as you said, not realising how they're behaving or what they can expect um, because they generally believe they know they're Mourinho um, or, or, um, or equivalent. So, I mean, that, I mean, that comes for, for talking um, and chatting um, for about an hour. So um, I don't know if anybody's got any more questions or want to put something into a into the chat. Um, but if you haven't, um, I'll pass over to Shane. Um, uh, there's not much of a closing uh, descriptor from me. It's more about um, I just go on, you know, I um, flick forward a second. You know, it's this understanding about you know, they don't realise if they're not behaving appropriately. And most of them are good people caught up in emotions and lots of things can drive our emotions. You know, we all know that calm down can't work. Um, I think picking up from Joe's work is get that relationship early with the with the coach. Um, you know, uh, are quite rightly in charge of the game. Um, deal with facts, not opinions and be calm. Don't get emotional in return, and it can very easy to be, especially the chimp paradox and Steve Peters bit. And then, if all else fails, you know, walk away, get involved, and report to the FA immediately. And that's what I'd say. But you know, it's a great game, and the most of the people you'll meet are the most lovely people who want their children to have the most great times. Certainly, from a coach's point of view, um, I've been nothing but impressed with the, with the refereeing in Wiltshire and how many good people there are out there. Um, you know, and I couldn't thank you enough as a coach and parent for the time that you give up. Yeah, I mean, just want to reiterate that. I think that uh, obviously without you guys, there's no games and the amount of times when we've not had a referee uh, on a Friday night running, ringing around trying to find one because you don't want to ref it yourself. So I know it's not, uh, it's it's a thoughtless task and at times, yeah, it, it's, uh, you, you're not treated fairly. Um I think it's an educational thing. I think it's, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to, unfortunately, it's not going to change overnight. Yeah, it's inbred into, you know, it's almost probably a generational thing that will take time um, to, to change over. Um, one thing I forgot to mention before about what a, a coach, just a, a little tip is, is, is especially in the youth game, uh, recognising that the captain might not be the most appropriate person on the pitch to talk to. There's quite a lot of youth teams just rotate it round rather than actually being the person that you could talk to to then get it across to the rest of the team. So just you know, being aware, if you can spot that, that maybe then it, it needs to go to the coach uh, from that. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, from my point of view, thanks for yeah, uh, turning up tonight and uh, listening to us. I hope it was helpful. Um, and uh, thank you for your participation as well, those that... Uh, as it spoke, hello. I'm not, I'm I'm surprised I wasn't hit with a question. Shane, you? Perfect. Thanks, Joe. That was really interesting. Um, thanks for everyone else for joining and taking part. Um, it's been recorded, so I I think a few people did drop out. So I will send you the link in the monthly update, or Mark or Edda will. Um, just a few dates for you before I go. So March the 25th, we've got the session with Ben Williamson and Graham Pearce around pre and post match preparation. So if you can join that, that'd be great. It'd be really good as well. Um, and then what I'm planning to do with the good news that football might return in um, April, 
So the week after the 25th, so maybe the 29th, 30th or 31st, I'm looking to do a session around returning to football regarding COVID. So if that's something you guys might be interested in, just let me know and we can get you involved as well, okay? Apart from that, thanks everyone and I'll close the chat here. Thank you. Cheers, guys.